The Treaty on the European Union includes a specific provision regulating the withdrawal of member states, Article 50. Up until the Lisbon Treaty, it was actually not sure whether a country could leave the European Union. Academics had had lively debates on the matter, but in fact, it was thought that the question of secession from the European Union would be mostly theoretical. In the end, however, the treaty establishing a European constitution and subsequently uh, the Treaty of Lisbon did include a specific clause on withdrawal. And one of the reasons why this clause was actually included in the treaty is at the request of the United Kingdom. Uh, very few thought that provision uh, would ever be used, but indeed the provision has been used precisely by the UK in a process uh, that, as we know, it's called uh, Brexit. Let's look a little bit closer at how Article 50 is designed uh, and how it is supposed to work, and let's then discuss the practice of withdrawal uh, using the uh, example of Brexit as a case study. So Article 50 confirms that a member state of the European Union can withdraw from the EU uh, on the basis of its own constitutional requirements. The starting point of the withdrawal process is the formal notification of withdrawal that uh, the interested member state must make to the European Council the EU institution bringing together heads of states and governments uh, of all the member states. After the notification of the intention to withdraw has been made, the clock starts ticking. According uh, to Article 50 TEU, in fact, the withdrawing member state has two years to negotiate a withdrawal deal with the European Union. Failed that, after two years, that member state will be out of the European Union. So Article 50 creates a time frame of 24 months only uh, within which the EU and the withdrawing member state must discuss the terms of exit. The job of outlining the principles on the basis of which these negotiations are taking place is specifically assigned by Article 50 to the European Council. However, the withdrawal agreement, so the deal regulating the terms of exit between the EU and the withdrawing member state, must be approved both by the Council and the European Parliament. This effectively means that on the EU side, all institutions are somehow involved in the process of uh, withdrawal. What Article 50 also says is that if after two years of negotiation, uh, the withdrawing state, or in fact, the European Union, uh, want to request an extension of membership and therefore a postponement of withdrawal, they can do so. But an extension of withdrawal can only be approved by the European Council unanimously and in agreement uh, with the withdrawing uh, member state. The last element of Article 50 that are worth mentioning in this context is that for the purpose of the negotiating talks between the EU and the withdrawing member state, that member state does not have a voice and a vote in the European Council and the Council of the European Union. And also, it is quite significant to underline that Article 50 specifically says a member state that has withdrawn from the European Union can reapply for membership, but in order to become a member again, it has to go through the full, complete procedure of accession to the uh, European Union. So what is noteworthy of Article 50 is that it provides a skeleton for the withdrawal of a member state from uh, the European Union, but a lot of how the procedure works really has to be sorted out from a practical point of view. And this is exactly what has happened in the context of Brexit.